Amen. Amen. Everything that is against you will have to fall down and bow for the name of Jesus. Amen. When you understand that that word works. Yes. And then words that are in your tongue possess ye the power of life and death. Yes. And the reason why we want through so many things because we speak so much death over you. Uh -huh. Come on now. I'm sick. I don't feel good. I'm broke. Get out of my face. <laughs> I don't really mean that, but you know, I feel like that sometimes. Amen. 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 I mean, we all go through some things. Amen. We all go through some things. Jesus went through it. Amen. He went through it. And the Bible says that Jesus Christ himself suffered in the flesh, and you are earned yourself like life. Because when Jesus was suffering in the flesh, he earned himself with the word of God. And when the enemy came against him and began to rail all these accusations against him and tried to tempt him, Jesus defended himself with the word of God. And the Bible said that when he pulled the word out, that two had to swear that the devil had to leave him. Now, although he only left for a season, when he came back, Jesus was still ready. Come on now. See, that's why you got to eat this word. You got to keep his word. The Bible says, hide his word in your heart that you might not sin against God. Amen. Amen. Your word, listen, this is your weapon. You got to have this book tucked away at all times. Because you never know when you have to pull it out with somebody. Come on. <laughs> Come on. You never know. You might have to pull it out on the devil. He might just show up. Amen. Amen. And you want to be ready. The Bible says, always be ready to give a man an answer. That's why you have this hope. Amen. Why are you here? Mm -hmm. Amen. Why, why, why are you here? What is your purpose? Amen. Right. God Almighty. That's, that's a hard question. That's a question that the church has been, been asking itself for, for ages. What is their purpose? And we come up with all sorts of ideas of what our purpose is. Amen. We have all these different uh, 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 fantasies, if you will, of, of what our purpose is. But the Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes that the only purpose of man is to fear God, keep his commandments. For well, this is the whole duty of man. Yeah. That's your purpose. Mm -hmm. Your purpose is to fear God and keep his commandments. What was his commandment? He said, well, I give you these two commandments, which is like unto the others. He said, these two commandments, the first one, he says, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy mind, all thy soul, and all thy strength. And the second one is like unto it, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Amen. He said, if you can keep those two commandments, if you keep those two commandments, you have done all that I require. Amen. Amen. Just two. two. Not the ten, Amen. not the six hundred and eighty that's already mentioned in the Bible, but the two. And Lord, those two are doozy. Oh, it's a doozy. I mean, you, you, you love the Lord, but sometimes you just don't want to get up and come to his house to be with him. You love your neighbor, but sometimes sit around with other neighbors and talk to him about it. Oh, I talk about that with him. Amen. Who are you? What, 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 what is your purpose of being here? Amen. What is your purpose of being here? There's something that... Uh, God has been working with me about. And it's, it's about me. Okay? It's about you, but it's talking to me about me. Amen? Amen? Amen. So as we go through our lesson today, I, I may discuss me. I, I'm not narcissistical or anything like that, but I believe that as long as I'm talking about me, I can't get in no trouble. <laughs> All right? <laughs> I mean, some folks have told me before it's a bad sign that you're talking right about me. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got time to talk about you. <laughs> first of all, I know God don't like that. Second of all, I know he's going to help you, none. Mm -hmm. Amen. And third of all, if I'm going to talk about you, then I don't really consider you my brother and my sister. Mm -hmm. And you shouldn't consider me yours. Okay. Amen. Amen. If, if anything, I want to build you up. Yeah. I ain't too far from nobody else talking about you. Amen. Amen. Ain't that what you said we is? I mean, I grew up in a household where, you know, we might, 
fuss and fight with each other. But then no, nobody else in there. <laughs> 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 hey, man, that's where the body of Christ ought to be. Hey, man, we ought to be at one another's defense. Not just, not just physical. Hey, man, not just physical. You know, you know we got to follow peace in all people, you know. But there, there should be some sort of resolution. The Bible encourages us to intercede for one another. That even if we find one another at a fault, it is our responsibility to restore that person. Amen. Amen. But you know when the enemy's coming to somebody, you come in and say, Pastor, I got this going on in my body, I got this going on in my body, and I know that sickness is not of God. Mm -hmm. right. Then I know that's an enemy picking on my brother and my sister. Right. Mm -hmm. So what do you do? You hit your face. Mm -hmm. Because the weapons of our warfare are not common, but they're mighty. You die for putting down a stronghold. Our weapons are prayer. Yeah. Our weapons are fasting. Amen. Come on now. This is our weapon. So you just, don't, don't, don't mess with my brother, don't mess with my sister. Amen. Amen. Otherwise, you got to fight on your hand. Amen. Amen. And you know, the Bible says one can chase a thousand, but two can chase ten thousand. So just talk to My sister and my brother, they, they might be being out of right now, but when I show up, boy, oh, come on, somebody. You ought to feel like that every morning you get up out of bed. Every morning you get up out of bed and you fall down up on your knees and greet the Lord for that morning. Don't you know that all hell is shaking because you got up out of bed? Amen. You ought to have that much power, that much confidence in your God. Amen. 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 Let me get a hit. Let me get a hit, hit, Jay. <laughs> Go to the next slide. Just hit them. Uh, not the answer. Mouse. <laughs> Amen. There you go. Maximize. All right, there we go. There we go. All right. Okay, for the past couple of weeks, even in Bible study, we've been talking about this thing. My wife gave us this word in uh in our leadership training. In leadership, how many of y'all been in leadership training? Amen. Amen. Y'all like it, next. Amen. 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 Let's kind of train you. We're gonna try to get to the whole church. Amen. But we gotta get the leaders together first. All right. Amen. But one of the words that she can talk about in our leadership training is a word called interdependent. Interdependent. And more and more I've thought about this word, the more and more I've thought about the machine. I, I, I'm a mechanic by nature. Amen. Uh, not just by profession, but <laughs> my mind just works mechanically. Okay. So I see everything in cogs and in wheels and, and in maneuvers. Amen. Other people may see theirs mathematically, they may see uh, equations and stuff like that, but I, I see everything uh, uh, mechanically. And so as I thought about this word interdependent, mm -hmm. I thought about how a machine mm -hmm. is interdependent upon one another. And by the way, the word independent means to be dependent upon one another for a common goal. Amen. Dependent upon one another towards a common goal. So a machine is interdependent upon the working parts of the machine in order to accomplish what it was designed to do. I don't ask, you listen, when I get my food from the store, before I put it in my microwave, I put it in my freezer to store it, right? So if I want to cook something, I'm going to put it in my oven. I don't take my dishes and put them in my oven. I take my dishes and put them in my dishwasher. Because the dishwasher was designed to wash dishes, right? So as long as you're utilizing whatever you have, and you utilize it for what it was designed for, and it's working properly, every component of that machine is interdependent upon one another in order to do what it was designed to do. Amen. Stick with me. We're going to This is called process. The process. Process is defined as a systematic series of actions directed to some end. A systematic series of actions directed to some end. Amen. God has a process. God has a systematic design for you and for I. But sometimes it's hard in the process. Y'all ever been there? Y'all ever been there? in the middle of the process and right in the middle of the process going smooth, everything working fine, everything kicking the thing like it's supposed to, or every wheel is in place and everything, and all of a sudden, you hear a hiccup. 
He said it like he wanted to say it. He had made a plan in January. He said, wait for a new year. I'm going to save some money. And he started saving some money right around here. Hey, that ain't going good. January, February, March, April, right around May while he go out. There's a hiccup in the process. What we have to learn to do is to learn to roll <laughs> with the bunches. <laughs> We have to learn to deal with the hiccup that comes in the processing. But I'm convinced of this one thing, that everything that comes into my life, whether good or whether bad, God designed it. God designed it. And not only am I convinced that he designed it, I'm convinced that he designed it before the foundation of the world. Even before I was formulated in my mother's womb, God already had a design for my life. And nothing has caught him by surprise. So one of the words that I've been trying to encourage people with, especially when they come to me and tell me about what's going on in their life, yeah, I'm going to pray with them. I want you to know that whatever you're going through is just a tool. Amen. If sickness, if, if sickness happens to be in your body, it is a tool that God is going to utilize in order to glorify himself. Amen. 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 Financial issues are just a tool. But one thing about tools is, Again, let me tell you, I'm a mechanic. Okay, so if I'm nailing a, a nail, it's not really good to pick up my crescent witch when I got a hammer there. Amen. Use the right tool for the right job. So if God is utilizing these tools in order to glorify Himself, then I ought not cry about what I'm going through. That's why James says, kind of all joy, my brothers and sisters, when you go through different temptations. Right. He said, because if you're going through it, then God will get some glory out of it. And when God gets some glory out of it, he's going to always share that glory with you. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. That's the benefit of being in the kingdom, that you'll be in the spirit of God, yeah. to be in his presence. But it's a process that we're going through. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. No matter what your de denominational affiliation is with the church, or what, whoever you're affiliated with, whether the denomination, uh, whether you're the whole with this, whether you're Christian, whether you're Catholic, you know, some people, they look at the denomination and they question whether or not they're Christian. Now, if you call yourself a Christian, okay, if you confess to be a Christian, I don't care what your denomination is, you better pay close attention to this thing. If you confess to be a Christian in this day and age, you're going to have to band together. All right, man. You may not like the way they do it over there. They may not like the way you do it over here. But one thing for sure, if you confess, then be founded mm -hmm. upon Jesus Christ, the chief cornerstone. Mm -hmm. If you confess, then be a blood-washed, born-again, five-baptized Christian. Mm -hmm. Then we need to band together. Because all hell is coming to fix us right now. Amen. And we sleep. Mm -hmm. We sleep as though we don't see it coming. Just this week alone. Just this week alone. They're spending all the drugs. People are studying dying. Right in our own backyard. Just this week alone. We don't know what the cause was. Two men up in Whitehall behind the car store coming up in a camera bed. Just this week alone. People are dropping dead all around us. And we, the church, still fight against one another about who got baptized in orange juice, who got baptized in water. We, but we fight about stupid stuff right. instead of banding together. Amen. This is not a time for us to start going to our different corners. This is a time for us to start coming together in the spirit. We're talking about in the spirit. Yeah. We worry about little things when there's large things that take place all around us. Some folk will come to the church because the way somebody looked at them before. They looked at you. The way they looked at you. You don't want to come back to church. You just said you don't want to come to church. If that's the only excuse you find, because they look at me like that. But it's our responsibility to keep one another encouraged because we're all going through the process. And the process is divinely designed. It don't look like it sometimes, do it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you feel like 
you can shut the door. You know why we feel like this, that we shouldn't be in a place here because we had a plan for our own sex. I planned on by the time I was this age, I was going to be uh, uh, financially stable. I, I planned on by the time I was here, I was going to have my own house that's going to be paid for. I planned on by the time I was here, I was going to be married and have kids. I, I planned on this time, by this time, I'll be having my education, I'll be working on my master's degree. Uh, we had all sorts of plans. And then when we look at our lives and things that work out the way we planned it, we feel like somehow we missed God. All right, listen to me. It's God's design. In His way, it will not shut down. His ways are not like our ways. Yes. And His thoughts are not like our thoughts. Yes. As far as the east is from the west, it's the ways of God for me. Yes. So whatever comes, as long as I know that God's on my side, I'm going to be all right. right. I'm going to be all right. Yes. No matter what's going on, I'm going to be all right. If the doctor give me a bad report, I'm gonna be all right. Yeah. If my funds get cut off, I'm gonna be all right. Yeah. If the church get closed, I'm gonna be all right. Yeah. If my wife and children leave, I'm gonna be all right. Because I believe that God has a divine design plan for my life. Right. And He told us that. Amen. Amen. The intricate parts that are independent in our lives. They run by the Father, mm -hmm. the Son, mm -hmm. and the Holy Spirit. All three are one, and they're working in us. They're working in us. You, you listen, God wants to do a work in us. Mm -hmm. If he has a purpose for your life, then that means that he has to do some adjusting, some tweaking. He got to put some things on and break some things off. All right. And we all want it on. Everybody want to know, but don't nobody want to get it broke off because it hurts to get broke. It hurts when he breaks you. Lately, I've been getting up. This jealous spirit coming over me. I ain't never in my life been a jealous person. Understand what I'm saying? But you got to be true to yourself. So whenever this spirit comes up on you that you know it's not really you, you know it's not God, mm -hmm. then you can only a, 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 assume that the spirit is of the demonic. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. Now I ain't never been judged. Mm -hmm. But yet I can feel the spirit trying to take a hold of me. Mm -hmm. So God says, you're just like I need you. Mm -hmm. You are specifically the way I decide. Amen. Amen. The problem with our interdependency is that we often abandon because we want to be a different part of the mission. I don't want to be the foot. I want to be ahead. I don't want to be in the back. I want to be up front. I don't want to sing. I want to preach. Anybody ever been there? Am I the only one? I mean, my own mind, I'm good with that. <laughs> but I, I, I I'm going to talk about me. The Father, the Son, and the Spirit wants to work in us, but we have to yield ourselves to Him. Mm -hmm. If you're not willing to yield yourself to Him, you're going to face hiccup after hiccup after hiccup after hiccup after hiccup. Right, because you refuse to say yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. you, have, you have to be willing to say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Have your way yes, in me. Yes. Any way you want to bless me, it's all right with me. See, some folks scared to say it. Some people are scared to say, Lord, have your way with me because they understand what that is. Amen. Amen. Lord, use me. They won't say that because they know what that is. Let's gonna take some break. And don't know it's gonna be broke. Amen. This is the way I've always done. Mm -hmm. Then this is the way we did it at my last church. <laughs> this is the way they say it's supposed to be done. I, I don't want to be broken. I don't want to be alone. I, I ain't never been alone. I've always had a, I've always had a woman. 
But now you tell me in order for you to use me, I have to abandon my thinking and my ways and my man and my woman. I have to abandon all that just to be with you. God said, yeah, because take me to us. Amen. You can't serve man in me. He said, you can't eat from the devil's table and eat from my table. Yeah. See, some folks want God to, to, to pay the bill, but they want to date his enemy. He said, you can't date my enemy and say, we be like that. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's talking about the process. The process. Amen? Amen. When God made the design for you, mm -hmm. he made it from the foundation. He said, I finished the end uh -huh. from the beginning. Uh -huh. In other words, God already seen it before he spoke into existence. That's what I love about being me. I'm sure some of y'all are like this, but I love this about being me. I like to design rooms, I like to design buildings, I like, I like But even before I put it down on paper, I see it. Even before I put it down, I see it. So when my hands get a hold of the raw material and I begin to formulate it, it comes out just as I see. Amen. Right now. All right. God seen you before he even made you. Yes. He laid out a blueprint for you. And then he gave you the blueprint. And said, improve upon what I've already built. Come on here. He said, improve on what I already do. Only thing you have to do is follow the instructions. And listen, at the bottom of every blueprint, there's what's called a legend. Right. Down at the bottom, there's a legend on every blueprint. And the legend tells you what materials you use. The legend tells you what tools you need to use. The legend tells you how many man hours it takes for you to be part of the, of the design. The legend tells you everything. God said, follow the legend in the blueprint and you'll come out with the expected end. But we don't want to follow the blueprint. You know what we want to do? We want to put some duct tape on. We want to put, we want to do our own thing. We want to put our own prints on there. I don't like that. I don't do it like this. Oh, you got to do it the way God designed. Amen. You, you, you can't abandon the person who is the, the, the universal architect that decides you want to do your own thing. <laughs> this is our golden text right here for today. It's Jeremiah 29 11, a familiar text. Jeremiah 29 11 says, for I know the plans I have for you. This is the Lord's declaration. Plans for your well-being, not for your disaster. To give you a future and a hope. God said, I got a future and I got a hope waiting on you. And I designed it that way. This was the plan I laid out for your life. I didn't plan this. So whenever, listen, whenever disaster comes, you know that that disaster was a part of the plan. Come on, somebody. Come on, come on, come on. You know that the disaster that came in your life, the calamity, the upheavals, the unreal, the, 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 the disease, or whatever it may come, come in your life to cause uproar, it was a part of the plan. And the more we fight against the plan, <laughs> the more disemboweled the plan becomes. And in our lives, get all disconnected. Listen, 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 listen. Y'all be honest. When my car broke, I take it to a bucket. When my house broke, I call a car. Who do you call in your life? When all these brains are broken, you go to a special, somebody who specializes in that field. But who do you think specializes in life? Oh, you go to God. Yes, yes, yes. You go to God. Just as you are. They say, Lord, I, I, I lost the plan. I lost the vision. Put me back on track. I, I want to follow you, those who are led by the Spirit of God. He said, those are my children. Yeah. And sometimes we 
don't understand the plan. But he made it plain and clear. He said, I know. You may not know, but trust me as you walk in the dark. That's called faith. He said, you may not know, but trust me, I know the plan that I have for you. It may not feel good, may not look good, may not look promising, but trust me, I know. God said, I know the plan that I have for your life. And that plan is not for your disaster, but for your well-being. That's his plan. Amen. And God has never abandoned his plan. Amen. Do you know that even though the children of Israel has rejected Christ as the Messiah, God still going to save them? He said that the reason why he allowed Israel to reject Christ is to open a door for the Gentile dispensation. Look at God's plan. God's plan is that my people who I chose, they're going to reject my son. And when they reject my son, it's going to open the door for you to come into my kingdom. But we don't look at it that way. Because we can't see through the eyes of Christ. But you can't see if you only line yourself up. You got to line yourself up. It's called the process. This process hurts. As I look at this, it reminds me of something. It says, no matter what you're going through there in life at the end of the time. How many of y'all been going through some bad things? Not everybody's about to say yes. How many of you going through some difficult things? But if God says that the plan that I have for your life is not for your disaster, for your well-being, that you may have a future and a hope. Then no matter what trouble I'm going through, no matter how dark it is, I believe that there's hope at the end of it. Amen. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. How do y'all believe there's a light at the end of the tunnel? Amen. 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 I believe there's a light at the end of the tunnel. And if we stay on course, if we stay true to God, we'll find out that there's light in the tunnel. But you're going through for your breakthrough. Look at today's I'm going through for my breakthrough. I'm going through for my breakthrough. How many of you need a breakthrough today? Yeah. Come on, somebody. How many of you need a breakthrough today? Yeah. How many of you need? We've been in this place long enough. We've walked out of this mountain long enough. We've been here 10 years. We've been here way too long. But we need to, listen, we need to go through for a breakthrough. Yeah. But that means that we have to fight. Come on, saints. We're going to have to fight. And you have to fight the good fight of faith. That means you've got to put on the whole arm of God. You've got to arm yourself with what Jesus armed himself with. And you've got to fight. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. What do you do with that light in the oncoming train? What do you do? You know there's a light at the end of the tunnel. What do you do with that light that you thought was your hope is just another disaster? Don't you get tired sometimes? Richard Dipsfield made a song some years ago said, if it ain't one thing, it's another. He said, if it ain't one thing, it's another. Before you get out of this, heck of something else. Just when you think you get some relief, here comes something else. Mm -hmm. Just when you just buried this little one, somebody said it's over in the hospital. It seems like like one thing, it's another. So what do you do with that light at the end of the tunnel? It's an honor and a dream. You got to tie another knot. Oh yeah. You got to tie another knot in. The Bible says, hold on until your change comes. Because it's coming. It's done. Amen. God said that the disaster is part of the plan. Mm -hmm. And the plan is for my well-being, for my future, yeah. and for my hope. So I don't care what's at the end of the tongue. I don't care what's in the middle of the tongue. I don't care what was at the beginning of the tongue. All I know is I'm going through the tongue. Right. And Jesus is walking there with me. Yet yeah, you know I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil for God is with me. My rod and my staff, and he comforts me. They yeah. didn't say he went in the, in the valley and stopped and laid down there in the middle of the valley and began to cry. Oh, Lord, I sure hate to be in this. Lord, why you let me go through this? Lord, why all this? Lord, why me? Why me? Why me? Lord, why me? No, he said, I went through it. I went through You have to go through It's part of the process, saints. It's part of the process. What's in the tongue? Worry. <laughs> How 
of y'all just overcome the world? Sometimes you just don't know what's going on in you. You just, you just, you feel with worry. And then worry got his brother. Yeah. I'm worried, and I, don't, I ain't even sure God will bring me out of this time. And because I'm worried, and I got down, of course they got the triplets. Fear. Now I'm scared. I'm worried that something gonna happen. You know, some people be worried because they're not worried. That's <laughs> it. Some folks be worried when they're not worried. Because they have so many things that they worry about when they find this place of calmness, it worries them. <laughs> we say we love God, we trust God, we believe in God, we look to the hills and we come by help. As soon as worry shows, doubt shows up. In doubt and faith cannot coexist. Either you believe God or you don't. Right God is so, listen, God is so awesome, so merciful, that he said, you didn't even come to him and say, Lord, I believe, but help God my Amen. Amen. That's how good he is. All they want to do is be honest. <laughs> See, you, you try to fool, fool, try to fool yourself, but God said, just be honest, Lord, I believe, but there's some doubt. Amen. So help my unbelief. And then, of course, fear. The Bible said that fear torments. Fear torments. You can't sleep because you're scared. Scared that they're gonna come take the house. Scared somebody gonna break the house while you're gonna sleep. Scared everything. Walk past mirror and jump. Scared your own shadow. Scared of a bump in the night. Scared everything. Scared to fly. Scared to get on the boat. Scared to skydive. Scared to do everything. But I'm going to get life. I ain't going to get life sitting at home. <laughs> I love to like the time where you got to get on the boat or a plane to go to it. Just it. Those are the things that's at the end of the tongue. The process is called sanctification. Sanctification. Sanctification is defined as a part to be set apart for a special purpose, for a specific purpose, for a divine purpose, to be sanctified. When God sanctified us, he set us apart. Okay? And in the process of setting you apart, behold your salvation. Being saved. Okay? You know what you get, bro? These are two words that are synonymous to sanctification. See the word consecration or the word holy. That means in, to be holy means to be set apart. But God said, be thou holy for I am holy. In other words, God said, set yourself apart because I'm set apart. Okay? Set apart, what is God set apart from? He's set apart from all other false gods. He's in a class all by himself. God doesn't counsel with anyone. The Bible says he counsels with himself. Amen. Amen. To consecrate means that you, you set yourself apart. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, when we ask you to, to fast, we ask you to consecrate, we ask you to, to set yourself apart. Meaning, in other words, you set yourself apart for this particular purpose. Because not only are you set apart from some things, you're set apart to some things. Hopefully I'm making clear for you. The process of salvation is sanctification. There are three phases to the sanctification. They call it you take notes of your life. There's three phases to your sanctification. First phase is called positional. Positional. The moment you gave your life to Christ, you were positioned as a saint of God. God sanctified you. At that moment, he took you out of the life of a sinner and made you a saint. All things were passed away, and behold, all things 
And because you know, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6 says, you are now positionally set in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Spiritually, that's where you're at. He took you out of the world and put you in the kingdom of God. So now you're saved. This is the process of your sanctification. But you say, well, Lord, I don't feel saved because I still feel the same. I'm still doing something the same. Thing. That does not alleviate your position. Take a this. When you got saved, you surrendered to Christ your position. You abandoned who you used to be. And you took on the new person in Christ who you are today. Mm -hmm. That's the first portion of the first phase of your sanctification. The second phase is progressive. Progressive sanctification. This means your daily living. That means that every day you're being saved. You're being renewed. You're changing. It's a process. It's a process. It is a systematic design toward an end. God is saying that every single day we have to work on our salvation. I'm already saved position. But progressively, as I live out my life, I'm getting stronger and stronger and stronger. The more I yield myself to God, the closer I get to God. The more I understand God. The more God can trust me with, the more revelation he gives me. Amen? Amen? But if I refuse to progress in my life, then my salvation becomes stagnant right there. And I never truly grow. Amen? Amen. See, positionally, when God saved me when I gave my life to Christ, he freed us from the penalty of sin, right? When you got saved, the pillars in the Bible says that the way to the is death. Right? When you got saved, God said you will never die. But you will pass from death unto eternal life. You will never die. You will, even when you leave, when your body stops to fuck you on this side, he said you only sleep in the Lord. Positionally. Now, progressively, when, as you live each day and you get stronger, you're free from the power of sin. See, that's how I get stronger. Right. Every day, I'm like, the more I exercise, right. the more I exercise, the stronger I get. Yeah. Amen. And the more I become disciplined to the exercise, the stronger and the bigger I get. So the more and more I get delivered from the power of sin. Yeah. Because sin was my enemy. Right? So my first one is positional, my second one is progressively. That means that every day you ought to be working on becoming closer, becoming closer to God, getting better. Those old things that you used to do that you know is not pleasing to God, every day you need to work on that. Some days you may fail, but don't give up. Right. Come on now, don't give up. You know, I, I, I know smoking bad, and I, I know I shouldn't be smoking. I know God said that he who defiles the temple of God, God will defile him. God will destroy him. I know that. I know he said that my body is not my own, but I've been born with a place, and my body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Ghost needs to dwell in the community. I know this. I know what I'm supposed to be doing, but I find it hard to do it because the spirit is willing, but my flesh is weak. But even though I know what I need to be doing and I'm working on doing it, when I fail, I'm not just going to lay down and stay down. I'm going to get up. Amen. And I'm going to keep working there. And one of these old days, a cigarette will be able to touch me. Amen. They will be able to touch me. I done got stronger. I know I should lust, but, I, but I'm working on it. I'm praying on it. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm practicing on it. I, I don't want to do it. I, I'm not going to do it no more. And I'm going to work on it. And I'm going to get stronger. And there will come a time where I can walk. Without that spirit eat being upon me. I know I, I know I shouldn't shouldn't eat overeat. All these things you know that you shouldn't do. You gotta keep working on it every day. That's called progressive salvation. Or progressive sanctification. Amen. Amen. That delivers you from the power of sin. Now, the third one is perfect salvation or perfect sanctification. This is when you stand in the presence of God. You will be totally, completely, and eternally free from the presence. So your sanctification delivers you 
from the penalty of sin. It delivers you from the power of sin. And it delivers you from the presence of sin. That is our goal. Our goal is to live a sin-free life. We are unable to do it on our own right here on earth, but the Bible promises us that there will be a day when we'll be able to stand before the Lord of the Lord and the King of Kings sin-free. And sin will even be in our vicinity. Sin cannot be in the presence of God. And since the Bible says that in our flesh dwell is no good thing, he said no flesh shall glorify himself in God's presence. Your body will return back to the dirt from which it came, this sinful ground. But my spirit is going back to the one who gave it, God. And my spirit will be free of all sin and any contamination of sin. It's called the process. The process is working every day in me. Let every man work out his own salvation with fear and with trembling. It is your responsibility to work out your salvation. It is my responsibility to work out my salvation. But it's also a dual responsibility that I help you to work out yours. Amen. All right, Pastor. you got to help me. Amen. Listen, to me, the pivot means that we are building things. We join together, supplying leads one to another. And the Bible said that we are building. Each and every one of us is a part of a block of a building called the church. Yeah. And we're supplying the needs one to another. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I got to encourage you, got to encourage me. If the song said, I got to pray for you, you got to pray for me. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And this is how we're going to be successful. This is the process. Yeah. But what's the end of the process? The end of the process, God said, it is my goal. God's goal is to conform us to the image of his son, Jesus Christ. That's the goal. That's God's ultimate goal. And listen, the hope of glory is in Christ. Don't you want to be more like Jesus? Yes. Should you strive to be more like Jesus? Yes. Do you believe that being more like Jesus is unachievable? No. Oh, no, you shouldn't believe that. You need to believe that I am already made like Christ. Right. I already held the mind of Christ. Yeah, listen, God said that you should be greater things than I do, for I must go away. He said, but I'm going to leave you here, and you will do much greater things than I did. Mm -hmm. And then he said, I'm not going to leave you as orphans. I'm going to pray to the Father that he sent forth the spirit of truth, and he will be the God to unto all truth. And the Holy Spirit come to help us. God didn't just leave us down here to go through this process called sanctification by ourselves, because when I came through it, guess what? The Holy Spirit brought that encouragement. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yes, you can do it. You can do it. Amen. Amen. That's what we need, saints. I don't know about you, but sometimes I need somebody to push me. I need somebody to encourage me. I need somebody to tell me that it's going to be all right. Because we're human. Amen. We're human. And we're subject to weakness. But if I can just get somebody to agree with me, then I get strong. Oh, hallelujah. Then I get stronger. And then you can, you can build off of my strength. And I can build off your strength. That's why I'm going to preach something. I've been preaching it. And, 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 and I don't feel like you, you get me. It drains me. But if, if I can just, if I can feel you pull on me. <laughs> if I can feel you pull on me. You pull on my come here. You, you ain't got to say, hey, man, preach better. All that. You ain't got to do that. I just need your spirit for goodness with my spirit that you receive it. What's coming out of here? Yeah. As long as I know that you receive it, then I know that it's God working through me to you. Yeah. Come on now, I ain't got nothing to do with me, I'm just a vessel. He's working through me to you. And he's touching your heart, and touching your heart, and touching your heart. And while he's touching your heart, I get the benefit of getting my heart touched anyway. Yeah. Yeah. All because I want to be a Jew. All because I want to be a Jew. All because I made myself available. Yes. Yes. It's called the process. In the process designed that we all come together in the unity of faith. That we all come together, each and every one of us. Listen, I can't leave you out there drowning. I gotta jump in the water, I gotta do my best to save you. And if I'm drowning, do your best to save me. We got a real devil to fight, saints. We got real devils to fight. And I was sitting is falling apart at the sea. Don't you know? Yes. Don't you know the only reason God put us here? Mm -hmm. 
is that we can hold the fabric of this city together. Imagine if the world was without a church. And the Bible talks about it. The Bible says that during the second death, there will be no power. All of us got to face the first death, right? All of us. It was important that all men wants to die. The second death is during the great tribulation. He said, there will be no power in the second death because the church will be gone. Jesus will come back and he's going to rapture the church. And then those ones who are left behind, they got to face the enemy all by themselves. Right now, we might face the enemy, but we don't face it by ourselves. Amen. Come on now. We don't face it by ourselves. We got a big brother named Jesus who ain't never wants to fight. And all you got to do is just call on his name. That's what he said. All you got to do is just call on my name. He said, I'll be right there. I like your superman. He said, I'll be right there. And no weapon formed that gives you will prosper. Yeah. Because he has already made you to be more than conquerors. Yeah. That's what he already did. He already made us to be more than a conqueror. We didn't just conquer. We are more than a conqueror. Yeah. It does you no good if you don't believe, if you don't receive it. You can walk out here the same way you came in. Yeah. Still wounded, beat, and defeated. Mm -hmm. But if you walk out of here, you take this word with you, you understand who you are. Mm -hmm. And you understand the process. And you understand that God has a design and He has a plan. And you understand that His plan is for your well being and not for your disaster. If you understand that God is for you and not against you, then yeah. you need to understand that there's nobody who come against you. That's right. Nobody. nobody. No doctor, no job, no person. No thing can come against you when you understand the process. Listen, I'm not going to sit and try to fool you and make you think that I understand all of the process because I don't. But as God give it to me, I'm going to give it to you. Amen. As he give it to me, I'm going to give it to you so that we can all grow together. In shot. So that we can all grow together in the unity of faith. Don't you know that when I prosper, you prosper. When you prosper, I should prosper. Yeah. Don't you know that? Amen. Don't you know that we are all one in the Lord? Amen. One faith, one baptism. Come on. Amen. We are all one. Yeah. Every last one of us. Amen. So we got to stop fighting amongst each other. Stop fighting amongst each other. I ain't talking about the bigger and the big stuff that people do in the flesh. I'm talking about in the spirit. See, sometimes in spirit, we fight like this one. Amen. We have all these, these different spirits going on in your head and in your mind. But it's your brother and sister. But it's not like this. But you know, God is in your heart. He's a man on the outside, but I'm in your heart. So that's why I have a prayer of David created me a clean heart. And renew your mind right spirit because my heart has been contaminated by the things of this world. Amen. Your heart has been contaminated by the things of this world. So if I don't want my heart to be contaminated any longer, I need to go to the mm -hmm. Right? Amen. I, I, I'm not talking about uh, particulars of uh, 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 the black I'm talking about the green, mm -hmm. the other green. I'm talking about Jesus. Yeah. The blood that washed you make you white as snow. Do you ever be with you? Do you ever deal with you? And sometimes you have to talk to me. Sometimes I have to tell you to get up out the way. Because you sometimes have your own agenda. And when you look at you, you know that that agenda is not of God. See, that's what I can say. I know that I ain't never had no jealousy. But when I see it come upon me, I know it's not a God, and I know it's not a me. So I have to begin to repeat that right in the name of Jesus. Now I know there's people who are jealous of me. And God knows I'm not proud of you. But I have no reason to be jealous of nobody. God will bless me beyond my wildest dreams. Why do I just have to do it? No, it's not going to 
I'm the one who is establishing this word, and I'm establishing it to you. It is a promise that I'm giving you right now. He said, in the plan is for your well-being and not for your disaster. To give you a future and a hope. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of y'all got hope in your future? How many looking forward to a bright future? Amen. Amen. God is good. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, just in case you don't know the Lord, I want to give you an opportunity to spend your life to Christ. I assume everyone in here is saved. But as you always know, I've told you many times, when you do assume things, well, y'all know the rest. Amen. But I try not to assume. Just in case you don't know the Lord, I want to give you that opportunity. And all you got to do is just believe this, say this, but believe it for yourself. And this also goes to those of you who are not viewing our audience, those of you on Facebook, those who are on our app or on our website. We also want to give you the same opportunity to switch your life to Jesus Christ. Because they'll come a day. They'll come a day when the Lord will show up and he might just show up just to you. But whether he shows up just to you or whether he shows up in the rapture, either way you want to be prepared. Yes. There's only one way to be prepared. You have to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior. Mm -hmm. You have to accept Jesus Christ as your substitute. They said, Lord, I am a sinner, and I want to be saved. I believe that you died upon the cross for all of my sins. I believe you died to, to deliver me from the penalty of sin, from the power of sin, and ultimately from the presence of sin. I believe it. I receive it. Now, Lord, come into my life, come into my heart, and help me to live a life that is pleasing unto you from this day forth. I thank you for it. And I give you the glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. My brother and sister, you said that prayer. You need to know that you're saved and there's nothing anyone can do to make you unsaved. God bless you. We love you. Hope to see you again this time next Sunday at 11 o'clock right here at Heaven's Church. Bye-bye for now.